Hey everyone, we're back here live at the uh, Linux Foundation Open Source Summit in Austin, uh, having a great time talking to some really interesting folks around the world of open source. And, you know, as someone who's been in technology 30 years, open source used to have a very sort of small connotation, right? There were some open source folks. Linux was the king of open source, the Linux Foundation. But today, open source touches just about every aspect of software. And of course, the world runs on software. And so our next guest is, is Tina So. Tina's with ARM, but she's also the co-chair or chair? Chair. chair of the uh, Linux Foundation Edge, LF Edge mm -hmm. uh, group. And, and first of all, Tina, welcome and thanks for coming on today. Um, Secondly, if you wouldn't mind, for our audience out here who maybe are not familiar with the LF Edge project and group, why don't you give us kind of a little background? Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. This is Tina Zhou. I w serve as the governing board chair of LF Edge. So LF Edge is an umbrella uh, project. It provides the framework for telco, cloud, IoT, and uh, many other business cases. So it is comprised of many projects like Acrino, Edgex Foundry, Open Horizon, everything, etc. Now we have 12 projects on the net, and there are one more coming on the way, uh, which is Edge Gallery. Um, so yesterday here in Austin, we had the Elf Edge workshop. We gave the talk about the technical sessions, lightning talk of uh, the presentation about who we are, why are we here, and what we are going to do uh, in the near future. And we also showcase the end-to-end, -end, like on the robotics, like uh, cross-project uh, collaboration, and also the uh, clean energy to show your uh, footprint of carbon it's very interesting and also we gave uh, synergy about the um, award proposal and also the mentorship program to even help the high schoolers and university students and the junior engineers to grow in the context of a Linux foundation excellent but that you covered a lot of ground right there right <laughs> um, you know let me take it back down a little bit. So first of all, when we talk about Edge, I don't know if everyone out here really understands just how big Edge and Edge computing will be, right? Mm -hmm. We've all spent, let's say, the last 15 years kind of getting our heads around, if you will, getting our heads around cloud, right? We moved from data center, on-prem, perimeters, to storing information in the cloud, mm -hmm. right? And we finally, I think everyone kind of understands cloud, though not everyone has everything on the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, most organizations have at least something on the cloud, mm -hmm. in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And just when we finally got our arms around that, now, hold on with that cloud stuff let me introduce you to the edge mm -hmm. and and now people are saying well wait a second the edge what what you know what exactly are we talking about here and we we've had several people uh today you're probably the, the third person who we've talked about a little bit with edge and we we've covered it before on tech Shrunk tv right the idea of moving closer to where the users are, closer to where the data originates, right, will have profound implications for certain applications. Some of the ones you talked about, right? Mm -hmm. um, some of the areas and verticals that you spoke about, where if we could keep that data close by mm -hmm. and do the analysis there, A, it's a lot faster, it's a lot cheaper, and we can do more with it yep. right there. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's my feeble attempt <laughs> to, <laughs> exactly. to explain what the edge is. Mm -hmm. Is there, what else am I missing? What have I left out? 
Yeah, I think edge computing is more like an extension from the cloud computing. When I say cloud, it includes uh, not only public cloud, but also the private cloud and telco cloud. Right. So for any point, all the way from the source of the data, from the cloud, all the way to the end, the, the, the end, the end user, and all the other way around upstream, right? And anywhere in between this path could be the point of edge computing, edge node. It can be at the access node or regional, uh, regional cloud uh, place location, and also can be at the home edge, can be at the uh, server room at uh, any enterprises. And there, there will be a white paper of uh, Elf Edge 2022 being available either today or anytime this week. You can get it from the Elf Edge website. Uh, search the tab on the uh, resource. You will, you can download the white paper. Well, as long as you brought it up, we might as well tell people what what's the URL for the Elf, uh, Elf Edge website. It's elfedge.org. Dot org, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's L F Edge E D G E dot O R G. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Good stuff. Now, you mentioned yesterday as we would we've been telling people well that today's sort of the official day one mm. of open source summit, but yesterday was sort of affiliate conference day and L L F Edge Elf Edge was one of the uh, providers of of I don't want to call it zero day because that has security connotation. <laughs> open SSF. Right. Yeah. But um, but you had some activities going on yesterday from LF Edge. And it was a workshop, right? Yeah, it's a workshop from 2 to 5.30. Actually, we had so many topics, we ended up finished by 6. Really? Yeah. Well, that sounds like you've got a lot on your plate when, you, when you're describing it. Yeah. But why don't we talk about what you guys covered at the workshop? Yeah. At the workshop, uh, first, uh, we have API talk about the trend of Elf Edge, and we have many uh, members all over the world that cover from Asia, Europe, EMEA, and even Africa. And, uh, and then we talk about, I give a talk about why Edge, because uh, from the Forbes, from all the analysis report, you can see the time, uh, the total accessible market, and also the same, uh, the serviceable uh, market you can get from Edge is large. By 2025 or by 2030, you can see uh, the road, um, the lines going up like this. So within this, we can see a lot of needs, like especially the uh, 5G and metaverse recently. You can see a lot of technology is needed, like uh, NFV, the AR, VR, or all of these things are needed. And then we have the technical uh, lightning talk because we have 12 projects they only get a chance to give a lightning talk. Some of the uh, end users sitting for the whole afternoon telling me he was very impressive on the, um, the, 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 we call it DevOps for the infrastructure orchestration, which allow you to access different backend for uh, Azure uh, from Microsoft, mm -hmm. also the GCP uh, answers, and also the uh, uh, AWS wavelengths, and we can provide a framework for the software and the end users, manufacturers. You can use the different clouds, not just only you locking with one cloud providers. I think these cloud providers can take a next step to be the 10 key solution for the IoT, the manufacturers. And also the other takeaway we think about is the couple footprint. You know, if you go to Washington DC these days, you gotta tell, you gotta talk about the clean energy, green energy. We have somebody and he was dying in from Iceland at um, I don't know, it's afternoon or nighttime. And he was actually in on the ice showing us live, like how they use the project of Fledge to take the uh, data and you can see the temperature and the data footprint in the, the big land of Iceland. It's really great. Um, and also like project mm -hmm. hourring, they make the data and the analysis then you see for your, whenever you add a socket 
or a module of the IoT, how are you going to contribute to the carbon? How much you are going to contribute to the green? Like, this is very important. And also, uh, like Open Horizon, these are all still the stage one project. They are very impressive. So they, the stage one um, uh, Open Horizon, they have done the, the very good uh, work leveraging the IBM uh, internal uh, system to show people what the data platform looks like for, for the IoT. So uh, LF Edge is not only focused on IoT. There are many like uh, telco, clouds, and the others. Like the, for the telco side, you can see uh, they showcase how they provide the, the, the services like for uh, the um, the telcos like uh, AT&T, Verizon, how they use Elf Edge's uh, open source to build their, like use the UPF to cross their network to do the orchestration. And also, um, uh, speaking of the public cloud, they work with the top uh, public cloud providers to do so. And also mentioned EdgeX, they have done the great work for the MQTT and for the industry IIoT to test the temperature and report any event which is abnormal there. I think most of uh, the stage three projects, the Equino EdgeX Foundry, is already in uh, widely adopted and deployment all over the world. And the second, uh, stage two, we call it the growth stage, is still being growth. Now their task is to get it more diverse, have more participants rather than just Google, uh, Dynamic, or I mean, like um, several companies. They need to be more diverse. And that means the project, the open source project based on Linux could be more widely adopted by the products from the vendors, not only for the, the end users. And for the stage one, it's it's really interesting. I am surprised to see even stage one projects got a lot of attention from the participants. Yeah, we are very happy to have this um, uh, workshop. And this is actually the first in-person workshop after pandemic at the Elf Edge level. And we hope we this is more like a warm up and we can keep discussing this and meet everybody at the One Summit in Seattle. I think it's in November. Yeah, and that would be so that. Is the event in November will be just an Elf Edge summit, or it's a it's bigger called LF? one summit. It was one called summit. CLF one summit. Right? Now they changed to one summit okay. because it's not only networking and edge, but also the cloud. So that's why it's called one summit. Love it. Yeah. You know this. That's a concept that I, I was discussing with someone earlier. Actually, it was off camera, a friend of mine uh, who's involved in an open source project, and that is. It's important to remember, and you, you said it well too early on, mm. that you know, there's this, in, there's this for sure certain link between edge and cloud. Yeah. And there's also there's a, a, a very real connection between network and edge and mm. cloud, mm -hmm. and endpoint and edge and cloud. And the other thing is a lot of us tend to think, oh, we're going to move to the edge closer to where data is, because it's where you know people are, their phones, their computers, tablets, what have you. But it's also the data being generated by billions of IoT devices and mm -hmm. stuff as well. And we want to be closer to that. But the, the real idea is that none of these concepts or areas operate in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. They're all part of sort of a unified computing structure. Mm. Where whether it's cloud, edge, network, you know, wherever, they're, they're not exclusively there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Information, data, analysis, mm -hmm. compute is being done ac across all of them. Mm -hmm. And that fabric, if you, I don't even know if the fabric's the right word, but that, the power of that mm -hmm. is, is extremely, I mean, that, that could be the future of, of where computing goes in the next you know, 10, 20 years, what have you. Mm -hmm. um, beyond yesterday's show, though, there's more LF Edge activity here at the Open Source Summit. Yeah, uh, some of uh, our uh, speakers yesterday, uh, actually, I think Glenn Darling is making a talk about uh, Open Horizon again uh, at today's mm -hmm. and he's he, he didn't have time to show the video with the robot is crawling yesterday but uh, he's going to show the video today that would be yeah. very cool 
Yeah, and also I think uh, Matthew and who gave very interesting talk about uh, carbon, uh, and uh, he's also giving talk either today or tomorrow. And I think the Elf Edge different projects keep uh, having the hackathons. One of that is the Elf Edge uh, Equino and Etimac are having a hackathon. It's kicking off. Uh, it's already kicking off like uh, today, and uh, the input entries will be ended by June 29th. It will last uh, till like uh, October. So the winner team will get the twenty thousand US dollar cash prize. That's great. Uh, yeah, That's and if you haven't yeah. signed you up, <laughs> please do so. And again, go to lfedge.org. Yeah. To do that as well. Mm -hmm. So much exciting stuff going on at the edge, huh? Yeah. Good for that. Um, November is is this next big conference, but there's hackathons going on all the time. Yeah, and Anything also also out? the summit probably in uh, August from Equino and Elf Edge. They have the uh, meetup. I mean, the Elf Edge Edge X Foundry. They have the meetup uh, uh, periodically in China and the states. And uh, you just need to go to the wiki page or the event page to see. So all right. our events are announced under the Alpha Edge web page, and you can check at the events. We have the event calendars there. Yeah. So there you have it. If you want to stay ahead of what, what's coming, what's the next big thing, this might be something you really want to join, join into. Tina, I want to thank you for coming on. This was great. You've given us a great update on what's going on with the... Uh, so it's, it's the Linux Foundation Edge Working Group, or it's not the Edge Foundation or anything? Uh, Elf is Edge is more like Elf N. It's an umbrella project, and it has many projects underneath. Yeah. And each project, they have the working group, they have the blueprints, and subcommittees, etc. You know, we work with the, uh, the Open Mainframe Project, which is also Linux Foundation, right? Mm -hmm. And it's very similar. It's an umbrella for... 26, I think, mm. different projects. Mm -hmm. Biggest of one is Zoe, mm. uh, but that's for mainframe and open source. Um, so I, it's that similar kind of umbrella, just called Alpha Edge. Yeah, we like uh, it's an umbrella project, but we still have the synergy. Like we try to do the end to end showcase, uh, mentorship program, and award across, and also security. I know you have a security background, it's a very yeah. Um, important part for us, we have the Home Edge. They got a golden bridge, uh, golden badge from the Open SSF, and we have the Equino uh, has the security subcommittee do the Linux and virus and Kubi Hunter scanning for all the projects Excellent. for release and also for the maturity review. And we have uh, EdgeX Foundry, and they have the specific uh, security working group. Yeah, and all the projects are going from one stage to another, and security is a must-have to pass the criteria. So that's music to my ears. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad to hear you thought of security not as an after, like, oh, yeah, yeah it's from oh, day yeah, one. security. Yeah. It's from day one, security. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. that, makes me, that makes me smile. Yeah. All right.